This conference will now be recorded. Well, good morning to everyone. Just making sure I am not muted. I think I'm on and everyone else is joining. We appreciate you being with us today for the Chambers Stakeholder Conference Call, sponsored by Burke. The recording of this call just began and we have invited our media friends to join us. I'm Kelly Augustine, a staff member at the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce, and I'm filling in again for your chamber president and CEO, Wayne Mitchell. We're happy to share good news that he is continuing to progress in his recovery, and we will look forward to having him back in our office, and I'm sure you are too. So today's chamber call, begins with a special presentation by our city's recreation supervisor, Joy Palmer. In February of this year, 2021, she and her husband, who happens to be a native Nacogdochian, moved here from San Diego, California, where she previously worked as a team coordinator for a popular gymnastics academy. Now, working for the city recreation department, she is assisting with all of the recreation needs of Nacogdoches. So Joy, thank you for being here today and we would love to hear more about all the good things happening in your world. All right, thank you very much. Uh, nice to meet you all. So uh, we have all sorts of things happening over here at the Brecht Center as well as uh, some wonderful things happening at the library. Um, one of the biggest things coming up is the corporate challenge. So uh, different companies throughout the area can participate in our corporate challenge. Um, there's a registration form as well as a packet that kind of explains all the different activities. Um, but just to kind of name the activities, we have uh, trivia, a scavenger hunt, uh, we're going to do mini golf and also like regular golf, um, bass fishing competition. Uh, we're also going to be doing like a beach volleyball. SFA has uh, graciously let us use their sand volleyball courts for that. Uh, we're going to do washers, table tennis, kickball. And then an adult field day that will include uh, a relay obstacle race, um, flag football, tug of war, and water balloon toss. So those are all of di the different activities for Corporate Challenge. The first event is uh, the trivia event, which starts on May 3rd. And then we're rounding it off with our field day, which will be May 22nd. So um, all of those activities, uh, People can, the different companies can sign up for one activity or all the activities, or they can do multiple teams in the different activities. So uh, I think it's going to be a really great team building and uh, just a great activity for everybody. In addition to the corporate challenge that we have for all of our um, companies in the area, we are also getting ready for all sorts of summer activities. So at the rec center, we have summer camps coming up um, and those will begin the second week of June. Um, and then we are going to be doing uh, adult softball leagues over the summer, as well as adults foot, uh, futsal, which is indoor soccer. Um, and then we're just continu continuing all of our regular activities. One of our newer activities that it has gotten started is um, pickleball. There's actually a article very recently about the pickleball starting here at the rec center um but in addition to that we have basketball we have a weight room but that one is going to be by appointment only um because it's very small so we're trying to limit the amount of people in there um we also have table tennis uh gymnastics and dance classes clogging zumba aikido twirling sign language zumbini um and our parks as well as liberty hall are now open for rental so if you want to rent any of those you just give us a call or you can also do them in, online as well and um then we have a couple of movies in the park coming up uh library is doing a couple and we are doing one as well so 
about one a month in the summer months. And then the library has um, some other exciting activities. They're doing escape rooms in the library. Um, they're setting it up so that you can sign up as like a bubble and then the people that you're normally around can um, all sign up together so that you're not interacting with just other people, kind of um, help with that. And then they're also gonna be doing um, encounter boxes for the elementary schools. Um, so for an example of that would be like one that's gonna be doing like robots. So that one sounds really fun. Um, and then for the high schools, they're gonna be doing some encounter boxes that are gonna be given to like one child and then that child will nominate a new child to do that encounter box afterwards. So kind of spreading those around. Um, and then every Tuesday, they're going to be doing a kid activity and um, they're getting back into their in-person activities. And then for the Blueberry Festival, they're going to be doing a cooking class. So that sounds awesome as well. And that's pretty much the scope of what we have going on here right now. Well, thank you, Joy. Uh, we always open up for q and I have a couple of questions myself, but I want to let our guest callers, uh, any of you have a question for Joy? What it was like living in San Diego? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the corporate challenge because even though I haven't participated myself, maybe we need to get a chamber team together this year for one of those awesome events that you noted. Um, I have heard great testimonials on how it builds, uh, you know, team. It's a team exercise. It, you know, it's camaraderie with your coworkers. It's friendly competition with maybe your other business friends. So. Um, I know you're relatively new. This will be your first round of Corporate Challenge. Is that right, Joy? Yes. Um, so I look forward to hearing about your first year experience with that. But if somebody, uh, either a business owner, manager, or coworkers got together and wanted to sign up, how do they do that? Uh, so they can call the rec center and we can help them sign up that way, or um, they can email um our email here at the rec center is just recreation at uh, nactx.us so they could email the rec center as well um they could drop by so there's a bunch of different ways i i have been sending out the information via email um to all of the companies that i already had contacts for wonderful and we at the chamber would love to share that too so i'll probably follow up with you on that Right. Uh, now, is this just for Nacogdoches businesses or those other programs that you mentioned for all ages or those open to just Nacogdoches residents? So Corporate Challenge typically is just the Nacogdoches businesses, um, but the, all of the other summer activities and the things at the library and, and those types of things are all open to anyone who would like to join. Okay. Throughout our county? Throughout, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And so you mentioned the parks are opening up. Um, I know there's a lot of buzz about the splash pads and getting to enjoy splash pads this summer. Is there any details you would like to give about splash pads in Nacogdoches? Yes, so the splash pad is um, set to open Memorial Weekend. Um, so after that, it should be open for the rest of the summer. Very good. So that, that's going to go for the one at Moroni and the one on Martin Luther King, correct? I think that's our two. Uh, the one on Moroni is the one that I am aware of. Okay. So did anyone else have any questions for Joy? Uh, we look forward to getting to know you better and uh, help you get to know Nacogdoches a little better too. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, well, moving on with our community partner reports. Um, I see Dr. Scott Gordon has joined us today, president of Stephen F. Austin State University. Good morning, Dr. Gordon. You have a report? Good morning, I do. I have a, a, a report on a lot of activities that will be occurring here on campus. Um, first and uh, foremost on Friday, uh, at uh, noon, we have our Big Dip Ring Ceremony, which will bring 
over a thousand students and family members to campus. And then on Saturday, we have our accepted student day, which will bring another thousand plus uh, people to, uh, to the community and to campus. And uh, that, uh, that event is for the students who have already been accepted into the university and their families. And I know a lot of community members are going to have a table set up at the uh, Coliseum for that. And then uh, next weekend is uh, a really big weekend. We have the um, commencement ceremony scheduled for Friday and Saturday, um, starting at uh, one o'clock on uh, Friday the 7th, and then going through till uh, six o'clock on Saturday the 8th. We have seven different ceremonies. So it's gonna be a very busy weekend. And so over the next two weekends, we'll see a lot of activity on campus and in the community. And that's my report. Well, thank you for uh, bringing all these good people to SFA and the Nacogdoches. I know our businesses are ready to welcome them. Um, did anyone have any questions for Dr. Gordon? Great. Well, well, we'll move on to city, more city information. I do see where Larissa Philpott, president and CEO of the Nacogdoches EDC is on the call. I'm not sure if city manager Mario Canizaris is on. Larissa, are you speaking for both today? I don't know. I know that we just left a meeting, so Mario may, may be running a few minutes late, but I will just mention for him in case he doesn't make it on that on, um, let's see, May, this next Tuesday, I have to look at my calendar, May the 4th, sorry, is um, the city council will canvas um, the results of the election. Um, there is um, an election this weekend, in case you didn't know that. Um, early voting, I think, is still underway, and the election, um, the um, Last election day is on Saturday, um, so we should have results Saturday evening. And then when I say canvas the election, that means that they um, count the votes at city council and say, these are our, our, our new um, city council and mayor. And so um, if you're interested in that, please come um, on Tuesday, May 4th at um, 5.30 p.m. Um, and I'll move into our my NEDCO report. Our next Spanish, our next entrepreneurship class taught in Spanish is going to be May 24th at 6 p.m. at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. We had a, a good turnout last time. We are really hoping to increase participation in this. Um, our our attendees last time were really engaged and really excited about continuing. So I'm going to share a flyer in the chat box here in a minute. If you have a friend or someone you know um, that primarily speaks Spanish and is an entrepreneur or wants to be an entrepreneur, um, please give them this flyer. And that's also all over Facebook. And then as well, Nacogdoches Restaurant Week is also on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we need our restaurants to go ahead and sign up so that we can start promoting their specials. Um, and then just as a reminder, that will run um, the last full week or the third full week of June. So June 20th through the 27th, I believe. Um, so with that, and I will add links to all of that on the side, please like Nacogdoches Restaurant Week so you can get um, the updates on the specials that everyone's having. And please invite your friends to town to come enjoy Nacogdoches that week and experience our local restaurants. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa. Any other questions for Larissa? Well, I'm looking forward to the next report from our executive director of the Visit Nacogdoches Department, Sherry Cheney Morgan. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm happy to report that we did receive our um, latest report from the Smith Travel Research um, people, and that is who we contract out with to give us the metrics of our hotel occupancy and um, our revenue per available room of our lodging inventories. So for reference, in March of 2020, that's when we first really started to see the effects of the pandemic on um, our local lodging partners. We were down 28% from 2019. And uh, for March 2021, this year, we saw an increase, so we are up 44% um, 
uh, from last year, which nets us uh, 16 uh, percentage points. And that is a really great place to be in this recovery. Um, I've yet to hear of anybody else of our size um, and demographics that has reached that, that high of, a, of an indicator. In our revenue per available room, which is the money generated per bed in our um, hotel inventories, in March of 2020, we were down 31.6% from 2019. And for 2021, we saw an increase of 51.5%, which nets us uh, 20 uh, percentage points. So it's all really great news. Um, it falls in lockstep with what we are hearing anecdotally from our properties around town. I know John McLaren of the Fredonia um, has mentioned that March for them was one of their best March to date period. Um, and that holds true for uh, a lot of our other lodging partners as well. And certainly um, what we see uh, from the foot traffic that we are um, able to witness here at the Charles Bright Visitor Center downtown. Um, next thing on our maps is Memorial Day weekend. We're going to launch that off. That's going to serve as our official start to summer. And we are uh, curating and crafting an entire long weekend of things to do. So it's going to start off with Knack Snack Friday. Um, we had our last one this past Friday and we're able to get in some snacking before the skies opened up. Um, but our next one will be on that fourth Friday in May. And then on that Saturday, the 29th, will be the first of our full moon summer concert series featuring an Eagles tribute band from the Houston metro area known, uh, the, they're called Already Gone and they're great. They have quite the following. We still have several different sponsorship levels available for that. It'd be a great time. I know the Fredonia is sold out for that weekend. A lot of our other lodging partners are reporting as well that that weekend is booking up fast. So it, it looks like there are going to be a lot of fresh eyes um, to be picketing, picking up on some messaging if you feel so inclined or are able to send some of your marketing dollars um, to help us in sponsorship for this concert series. And those tickets are on sale now. So it's $10 a ticket for adults and uh, $5 for children. And um, we can work out special group discounts for any businesses that would like to buy a lot of them for um, employee incentives um, or anything along that nature. And um, for that Sunday and Monday, Joanna Temple and Ashley Morgan here at Visit NAC have uh, been going out and encouraging our other hospitality partners to create some experiences for people that are going to be in town for Memorial Day weekend. Um, so uh, you'll see a lot more brunch specials, um, a lot more live music happening in dining experiences. Um, and it is shaping up to be something that I haven't seen in my, this will be my fourth uh, Memorial Day here. So uh, it's always been something that Joanna and specifically has, has wanted to bring to fruition and she has worked really hard um, to make it happen. So we are excited to launch summer 2021 and all that that will bring. And as always, it's an honor to serve you and we thank you so much for everything that you do in ways big and small to help make Nacogdoches a great place to visit. Well, thank you, Sherry, and, and to your team for all the good things you're doing. Does anyone have any questions for Sherry? Okay, well, I believe Gary Lee Ashcraft is taking uh, some time to reflect and uh, Regroup. <laughs> so we have the lovely, oh, excuse me, let me make sure I get your title correct. Is it Executive Vice President Caroline Garner? Exactly correct, Kelly. Kudos. <laughs> With Nacogdoches Area United Way. Caroline, we'd love to hear more from you what's going on in your areas. Why, thank you, Kelly. Um, well, first of all, uh, Snowpocalypse, that's two months behind us. I don't know. How many of you might still be suffering the effects of that? I frankly, personally, just got back into my shower stall after having to traipse upstairs to my daughters for the last couple of months. 
So uh, the plumbers are still at it. I know if it's happening to me, it's happening to others. And at United Way, we are keenly aware of that. We still get phone calls and uh, people are, are often not able to pay those plumbing bills like very fortunately my family is. So we still have grant money coming in thanks to United Ways of Texas. We had received $9,000 towards our Snowpocalypse Fund. It has a better name than that, but I just like that word. Um, and just recently, we, we were told we were re receive an additional $16,000 from a United Way Worldwide partner. There was a large grant that they made that was allocated to United Ways that were in the area um, affected by the winter storm. So we're very excited to be getting this sort of uh, funding through our United Way pipeline. We're going to be um, uh, distributing that uh, largely through Love Inc. to help some of the uh, some of the people who can't afford to pay those plumbing bills get their work their needed work done. Um, also with United Ways of Texas, uh, we have been in busy in the area of advocating. That's part of what we do at United Way, advocating for needs uh, in our community for those who maybe can't speak up. Uh, some of you may have heard about the threat to mental health funding in the state of Texas. That went hot and heavy this week at the Capitol and uh, working with our representatives in Austin at the United Ways of Texas, we helped advocate for, uh, for that funding to be continued and, and certainly not diminished. We know that would have a, a terrible effect uh, here in our community uh, with our partner Burke and others. So uh, we're, we're excited to have been able to reach out to our our legislative representatives through United Ways of Texas and done our part there. Um, we have a lot going on with our agencies. First of all, today, you may have seen on social media, is the East Texas Giving Day. This happens once a year. It is sponsored by the East Texas Community Foundations. That's where we have our endowment. Intent if anybody's looking to contribute to an endowment. Uh, but they do sponsor this East Texas Giving Day to bring awareness to Nonprofits in the East Texas area, we don't participate to raise money for United Way. Instead, we just let that be up to our um, agencies who want to participate. Today, we have participating from Nacogdoches in the East Texas Giving Day, Solid Foundation, Christian Women's Job Corps, Boys and Girls Club, and the Nacogdoches Treatment Center. So uh, if you're so inclined to get involved and make a donation to one of the East Texas area nonprofits, I encourage you to look that up and look for one of our Nacogdoches partner agencies. Uh, also, this month um, is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. That is being promoted by Family Crisis Center. Tomorrow, Wednesday, is National Denim Day. That's not just a thing in Nacogdoches, but uh, that takes place tomorrow. Uh, it was originally triggered by a case that happened. Uh, it went to the Italian Supreme Court, actually, in 1999. A rape conviction was overturned because the justices felt that since the 18-year-old rape victim was wearing tight jeans, that implied consent. <laughs> so pretty, pretty incredible. So to bring awareness to to that case and just uh, sexual assault over overall, tomorrow is National Denim Day. If you want, you can probably pick up a button from uh, Families Crisis Center here. Otherwise, just participate. And when people ask why are you wearing denim on a Wednesday, then you can tell them because it's National Denim Day and, and uh, maybe bring some awareness to that as well. Um, we had a partner agency, um, the Adult Learning Center, that unfortunately recently voted to disband. Uh, we're very sorry about that. They uh, did a lot of great work here in Nacogdoches. However, we are happy to report that much of their mission has been taken over by GetCap, the Greater East Texas Community Action Program. Um, Nacogdoches Adult Learning Center had partnered with Angelina College to provide some uh, free educational training, or at least help supplement the cost of the educational training for some of their students. Now that they've gone by the wayside, GetCap has stepped in, has just recently forged this partnership with Angelina College. And I want you to be aware that this week on Thursday, there will be a representative from Angelina College at Project Turnaround, which is the name that GetCap gives this initiative. Uh, that takes place out at the Head Start campus on Old Tyler Road this Thursday, April 29th from 10 to 2. Representatives from Angelina College will be there to answer questions and meet with potential students. Uh, they have numerous certificate programs. 
They can lead to jobs in demand. Uh, this can prepare students to do heavy equipment operation. They have a virtual lab for that. A number, vast uh, array of other types of jobs and careers. So it's a great opportunity for people who are, who are down on their funding to now get help, getting their, getting uh, well, it's Project Turnaround, getting their lives turned around. <clears throat> So spread the word about that, and we've already notified our partner agencies of that as well. Um, and then as far as in Nacogdoches Area United Way, um, we are excited to announce uh, that we do have our day of caring coming back for sure this year. We've had some pieces of that puzzle fall into place just recently. Day of Caring is a community-wide volunteer event for our partner agencies that we started back in 2017. We did it successfully for three years at Gorilla each year. We took last year off because of COVID, and now we are coming back and uh, very excited. Our, our agencies are saying, oh, yeah, boy, do we have some projects for you. <laughs> and um, they are going to be designed with COVID in mind, even though things are improving. We know it's not completely gone. So instead of uh, having jobs which might involve people painting in a little closet, it's going to be stuff projects where people can be spaced out and hopefully in outdoors. So that'll be the last, I mean, the third Friday in June. It's the morning of, of June 18th. And so there will be more coming about that. But we've recently secured the Expo Center upstairs room as a breakfast for our volunteers and a sponsorship by eTech for that. And um, anyway, so we're just, we're very excited that's going to be coming together. So watch for that. It's a great team building opportunity. And uh, the last thing I will mention, it's been a long report, I'm sorry, um, is that Gary Lee Ashcraft did his first podcast for us at Rex Perry Autoplex because they are a major, uh, longtime cornerstone donor, 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 it's hard to say that, those words together, cornerstone donor, <laughs> as they have donated a Rex Perry Autoplex car to our campaign every year. So that was out there at Rex Perry Autoplex film. You can find a link to that when you want some Gary Lee Ashcraft entertainment on our Facebook page. That's all I have for you, Kelly. Well, that's quite a bit, Caroline. Does anyone <laughs> have any questions? That's okay. enough. <laughs> Thank you for all you guys are doing in your partner agencies. It's wonderful to see the work in the community. Thank you, Kelly. Well, I do see our city manager has joined us, uh, Mario Canizares. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, very quick report. Uh, uh, we have uh, today is the last day for early voting um, for the municipal elections and school board elections as well, but really just for the municipal elections that I'm, I'm concerned about. Uh, and then uh, and then Saturday uh, from seven to seven will be the actual election day itself. And then for next Tuesday, um, we plan on canvassing uh, for um, the the two uh, council member positions and the mayor position. So uh, moving forward uh, on that, we're in the throes of our budget process. Uh, we had a, a, a brief visit with Austin yesterday to visit with representatives Ash, Ashby, uh, Clardy for, for, for a few moments and also for Senator Nichols and visited with uh, representatives from TxDOT along with the Texas Department of Agriculture. We've got a couple of projects in the hopper with them and so wanted to check in with them. So we're happy to, that we were able to make that quick visit to and from Austin uh, on Monday. So with that, that's all my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did anyone have any questions? We also have another wonderful city employee here, Jessica Sal. I know she's involved in historic sites and Main Street, but uh, you also are our link with uh, the county for vaccination information and all those good updates. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. Yes, I wear many hats lately, which is good. Um, so not a lot has changed in the COVID front, which is good. We're trending in the right direction. Um, we do have another Moderna vaccine clinic tomorrow at the Nacogdoches um, Civic Center. Um, Wednesday from nine to four, we still have quite a few appointments available. Um, you know, we seem to have vaccinated a lot of our critical mass of people that really wanted it. And now it's people that are kind of getting the vaccine when they can, when they think about it. So we still have quite a few appointments available, which is great. Um, the way you get an appointment is going online at tinyurl.com slash vacnac, and I'll put it in our, our notes as well. Um, or you can call our call center, which is also listed on our Facebook pages and our city website. 
Um, and as a reminder, Moderna is a two-shot system, which I know a lot of us know by now, but um, it's still good to remind people that if you get the first shot, you need to come back for the second shot because we're seeing a few issues with that here and there. Um, and also the vaccines are free to everybody. Um, the next clinic we'll have is May 5th at the Expo Center again. Um, we had our first Saturday clinic this past Saturday with the help of SFA at their rec center. So thank y'all for that. Um, we were able to vaccinate, I think, 200 people or so, which is good. Um, but Chief Kiplinger and kind of our, our staff and our, um, our team has kind of decided we're going to move away from some of our really big vaccination clinics just because we don't have eight or 900 people we need to vaccinate in a day in, anymore. Um, so we're going to slowly move away from that and do a little bit smaller clinics in various locations around town um, and try to reach some populations that, you know, couldn't come during the day, need to come in the evening, or they just can't travel very far because of limited transportation. Um, and so we're going to start trying to meet people where they are, um, which I think will be a good move. And we'll kind of get some of those people that haven't been able to come to us. Um, so that's where we are right now. Of course, up-to-date information is always on the city and the county's Facebook pages and both of our city and county websites. And that's all I have. Yeah, and I'll just say thank you too for keeping that clearly posted. Uh, it's been a great reference for the chamber too as we just get calls and we can help uh, send folks to the right places. So thanks Jessica to you and your team. Absolutely. Well, we're going to welcome back from Nacogdoches ISD, Les Linebarger, the Executive Director of Communications and Community Engagement. Good morning, Les. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. There are a lot of into school activities coming up in uh, coming days and weeks. Graduation will take place May 28th at Dragon Stadium. A week prior to that, on May 21st, Nacogdoches High School will hold its Senior Scholarship Assembly in the NHS Auditorium. Prom will take place a week from Saturday on May 8th. These types of things are great to be talking about. And while we're still dealing with a few restrictions on numbers of people who can attend any one event, we really feel comfortable scheduling these end of year activities. Also, we've got construction ongoing in the district, as you all know. Kelly, if I may, uh, in a couple of weeks, our superintendent, Dr. Trujillo, will be on this call and he'll provide a construction update uh, in much more detail and depth. But many of you have already seen the information that the new Emmeline Carpenter Elementary is not expected to be ready in time for the start of school for the 2021-22 academic year. The campus will not be complete until later in the fall, meaning we will likely be looking at a move-in taking place during an extended holiday break later on this year, such as at Thanksgiving or at Christmas. The Carpenter Project is a sight to see, and it will be a spectacular facility, one uh, that we're certainly gonna be proud of and we hope the community can be proud of. It's just not going to be ready in time for move-in this summer as we had hoped it would be. Kelly, thank you for letting me share this morning. It's great to see everyone. Thank you, Les. We appreciate that. And we do look forward to having uh, Dr. Trujillo as our guest on a future call coming up in May. Any questions yeah, for I, Les? I hope I didn't jump the gun on that or anything, Kelly. Hey, as long as he's good to go, we are. So glad to have him. Uh, we do have a quick special announcement from one of our members, uh, also a former board member of the Chamber of Commerce. Mary Montniac with the Piney Woods Apartment Association. This is an announcement that would affect a lot of our businesses. So Mary, what do you have? You have to unmute yourself first though. Sorry about that. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, because of the need of certified pool operators where uh, pools are open to the public, um, we are offering again, a certified pool operators class, May 13th and 14th. Um, the certification will be for, a, it, once the student passes the test, will be a five-year certification. Um, registration, um, to get that registration, if you would contact the apartment association, and that's, um, my email address is ae at pwaa.net. 
and that's the, so may 13th and 14th two days of certification thank you kelly sure i mean that's important we need our pool certified because summer is coming um i did not have any other scheduled guests but if there is someone from the community community partner that i missed or had a special announcement i do want to say thank you again to joy for joining us today and giving us the update uh, that sounds like a lot to manage and a lot of good things happening i forgot to mention that you are also involved in the texas blueberry festival joy with help from Hannah and Brian in your department, you guys have set up an online registration for the washer board pitching tournament at the festival. And although I'm sure the corporate challenge is friendly competition, that washer board pitching gets pretty heated, let me tell you. So uh, if anyone is interested in signing up a team to pitch washers at the Texas Blueberry Festival, you can do that online. I also wanted to pick up on something Dr. Gordon mentioned with the accepted student event at SFA on Saturday, May 1st. The chamber did reserve a table. We will be part of the resource fair that will be going on during this event at the uh, Coliseum. If uh, one of our board members or volunteers would like to help man that table, you can contact me or as a business person, you might want to be involved as a volunteer throughout that event, which starts, I believe, around 12 and goes through four, but it's several hours. You can sign up for shifts and be on campus as a greeter, as a welcome to Nacogdoches, welcome to SFA person. And there are also uh, opportunities for you to donate giveaway items. They'll be doing goodie bags for everyone to pick up and take. I believe they need 500 items by 10 a.m. this Thursday as in day after tomorrow, but you could still get an item in that goodie bag. So there are great opportunities for us to support SFA, support these folks that are coming uh, to Nacogdoches. And if you're interested, please let us know here at the chamber. At this moment, I will uh, Again, say hope Wayne catches the call and is able to see our faces and know that we miss him. Uh, we do need to thank our sponsor, Burke, once again, and wishing you all a good and prosperous week. Thank you all for joining us. We're going to adjourn.